Sinbad may be best known for his big and bold style of comedy, but in recent years, he's been largely absent from our TV and movie screens. So where has Sinbad been, and is he still doing comedy? Keep watching to find out. Before he was known as Sinbad, David Atkins worked several jobs, including a stint in the United States Air Force. While serving, Atkins competed in the Air Force's talent contest in 1981, but he lost. As he told Pasadena Weekly, he also repeatedly went AWOL to pursue other interests, hoping to be kicked out. Eventually, he was discharged for parking his car in the wrong position. Atkinson's interest in stand-up comedy developed from his experiences in and out of the Air Force. He decided the best way to make a name for himself was to literally come up with a new name. As he shared with Ebony, he chose Sinbad out of admiration for the character in Sinbad the Sailor, and he's been called that ever since. His first big break came by way of the talent competition series Star Search, which saw him go up against Dennis Miller and John Kassir. Ultimately, it was Kassir who won. But despite coming in second place, Sinbad's career was moving along. Soon enough, he would score the role of Byron Lightfoot on The Red Fox Show. Unfortunately, the series suffered from poor ratings and a competitive time slot, so it was canceled after a few months with only 13 episodes. Still, it helped Sinbad get his foot in the professional comedy door. He had a walk-on appearance on The Cosby Show in 1987, and that gig springboarded him into a recurring role on the spin-off series A Different World. Following his earlier successes, Sinbad continued working in television with his breakout role happening on A Different World. The show offered him more opportunities to get in front of an audience than his previous work, and his career benefited greatly. He played Coach Walter Oakes from 1987 to 1991, appearing in 74 episodes. He left the series to pursue other projects, explaining to Vanity Fair that he was interested in working in films and developing his own TV series. His work on A Different World proved he was a hot commodity, so Fox offered him his own series, which premiered in 1993. The Sinbad show wasn't exactly based on the comedian's life, but it did mirror certain aspects of it. I know your mama didn't raise no fool. On the show, Sinbad played David Bryan, a bachelor who takes in two foster children. During that time, the comedian had recently divorced, receiving joint custody of his two children. Soon after the show premiered, Sinbad spoke about how his work on the series helped him transition into living and working as a single parent. The Sinbad show wasn't a huge success, and Fox ended up canceling it after only one season. But the series cancellation didn't put the comedian down, because 1991 was the year he scored his first HBO comedy special. And that's where Sinbad truly made his mark on the entertainment industry. In the 1990s, one of the best ways for a comedian to build a large audience was to land a gig on HBO. That happened for Sinbad in 1991, when his first comedy special, Sinbad, Brain Damaged, premiered on the channel. It was recorded in front of a packed house at Morehouse College in Atlanta, Georgia. The special proved to be incredibly popular. Not only did it make Sinbad a superstar, but it still holds up decades later. We'll come back, we'll talk more about Eddie. We got a commercial. Yeah, we got a commercial. Really? Yeah. You didn't give Sinbad no commercial. <laughs> This was when Sinbad's career really took off because while he had success in television, his HBO special made him a household name. His work for HBO personified the phrase, hit the ground running, because he didn't stop with one special. While working in every facet of the entertainment industry he possibly could, he continued making new HBO comedy specials, each of which furthered his fame and prominence. In 1993, he packed the house at New York City's Paramount Theater at Madison Square Garden when he recorded his second special, Sinbad, Afros and Bellbottoms. That special nabbed him an NAACP Image Award for Outstanding Variety Special. In 1996, he released Sinbad, Son of a Preacher Man, and from there, he just kept going. Special after special saw him receive fame and fortune. More importantly, he was nominated for numerous awards and his fame only grew. Everyone wants fame and fortune, but getting those things doesn't always work out well. In Sinbad's case, he had difficulty managing his bank account. It's not entirely clear when his struggles related to money began, but his work throughout the early 2000s became far less frequent than during the prior decade. His financial issues were likely exacerbated due to infrequent work, and he became severely indebted to numerous agencies, including the state of California and the federal government. At one point, as Time noted, he was on the state of California's top 10 list of debtors. The Los Angeles Times reported in 2009 that Sinbad owed the state some $2.5 million in income taxes. The debt was accrued via an unspecified tax lien filed in 2001. Also in 2009, the Detroit News reported that Sinbad owed the Internal Revenue Service $8.15 million. Being on the hook for that much money isn't necessarily something you can just walk away from. 
An assistant U.S. attorney pursued legal action against Sinbad by going after his home. But as Accounting Today explained, the estate was in his brother's name. All of the mortgage payments and property taxes paid were made from Sinbad's account, and the IRS came for the money. According to the IRS, Sinbad filed his tax returns through 2006, but failed to pay what he owed at the end of each year, resulting in a sizable debt. As is common for celebrities whose careers are in a slump, Sinbad turned to the world of reality television. He appeared on Donald Trump's Celebrity Apprentice during the program's 2010 season. He had known the future politician for years, having performed in various Trump casinos in the 1980s. That said, he wasn't exactly a fan, telling Pasadena Weekly. He's always been a jerk and selfish. New Yorkers let him get away with too much, like a baby that doesn't get corrected and it grows up a nightmare. Despite his low opinion of Trump, he agreed to appear on his reality series. Sinbad explained to the outlet, The Apprentice was supposed to be a joke, picking a guy who was bankrupt multiple times and letting him tell people they're fired. However, it ended up being no laughing matter. As he came to regret doing the series, Sinbad told the publication, I should have never done the show, but they said it was for charity. Ultimately, Sinbad was fired from the program, having lost to Bret Michaels. Speaking about his experience on Oprah, Where Are They Now?, the comedian said that he wished he'd used the You're Fired catchphrase during his boardroom scene. I fire you, Donald Trump! Back in the 1970s, Sinbad was more interested in playing professional basketball than pursuing a career in comedy. He played for the University of Denver, but as the Daily Press noted, knee problems, quote, forced him out of basketball. Knee injuries have a way of coming back around and causing problems later in life, and that's precisely what happened to Sinbad. In 2010, those issues with his knees finally caught up with him. It wasn't just one either. He required two knee replacement surgeries. He ran into another problem in 2015 when he needed spinal fusion surgery. The comedian hasn't gone into detail regarding how he injured his back, but he kept his fans updated on Twitter throughout his recovery. If there are two things that come with medical problems, it's time and money. The cost of medical procedures, even if you're insured, can be astronomical. For example, a Blue Cross Blue Shield study found that the average cost for a knee replacement hovers around $30,000. Add to that the recovery time and inability to work, and a public figure can wind up losing opportunities in an industry that loathes a vacuum. Sinbad managed to make several appearances between 2010 and 2015, but his celebrity profile was nowhere close to where it had been in previous years. Sinbad seemingly disappeared from the limelight, and that's partially true. With that said, the comedian has worked for decades, and his recent activity has afforded him many new opportunities. The big difference is that while he occasionally appears in specials and walk-on roles, most of his latest work has been behind a microphone. Like many people in his profession, Sinbad has cultivated a unique voice. That's not to say he sounds unique, but his manner of speaking and style managed to come across through his voice, and he's capitalized on that. Sinbad started doing voiceover work in 1996, playing Riley in Homeward Bound 2, Lost in San Francisco. But he became more prolific in the 2010s. Some of his recent credits include playing Orojo in The Lion Guard, Mr. Smiley in Steven Universe, Eddie in Slacker Cats, and the list goes on. While his voice credits have grown, he still managed to find work doing various comedy specials and other similar programming. In 2018, he landed a recurring role as Dad slash Malcolm X on Rel. That credit ended after 12 episodes in 2019, and as of January 2022, it's his most recent live-action acting role. His reduced workload was likely the result of the COVID-19 pandemic, but more than that, it was a health issue that led to a complete cessation of work. After years of money problems and several medical issues, Sinbad's career was finally on the rise once more. However, in November 2020, the comedian had a stroke. The news of his condition was broken by his family via a release in the AP. It is out of sincere love that we share Sinbad, our beloved husband and father, is recovering from a stroke. In the statement, it isn't clear when he had the stroke or how severe it was, but the Atkins family did say he was recovering. The statement was brief and gave few details, but it did highlight his contributions to his craft. Sinbad is a light source of love and joy for many generations. While he is beginning his road to recovery, we are faithful and optimistic that he will bring laughter into our hearts soon. The family closed out the statement asking for privacy during Sinbad's recovery. Since the stroke, very little information has been revealed about how he's doing or when he might be expected to return to work, or if that's even possible. The only news to date came in December 2020 when Sinbad's children, Royce and Paige, posted a video on their father's Instagram account. They said that he was getting better each day and they shared Sinbad's words from earlier in the pandemic. We need each other to get through this journey. I can't wait to see you all again soon. As always, stay funky, stay prayed up. 
Sinbad has been out of action since he had a stroke in November 2020, but that doesn't mean his friends and fans have forgotten about him. He may not have been able to perform, but his many friends in the industry came out in full force to support him in the best way they know how. They put on a comedy special in his honor. In June of 2021, One for Sinbad, the badass comedy show took place at the Nashville Comedy Festival. According to Now Playing Nashville, the show was billed as a benefit event featuring some of the top comedians in the industry live on stage as Sinbad's friends and fans come together to support his road to recovery. That roster included D.L. Hughley, Faison Love, Arnez J, and more. Sinbad's children attended the show, and they shared some of their father's words while also giving an update on his recovery. In a statement on his Instagram page, his children wrote, We are overwhelmed by the outpouring of love from his comedy community and fans. To every comedian who performed and everyone who made this event possible, our family is so grateful. Laughter may not cure all, but it sure can be good medicine.